click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject electromagnetic field theory we are with chapter number 11 that is plane wave reflection and dispersion the first term of this chapter title that is plane wave reflection we are dealing with we started with taking the normal incidence for the boundary interface separating two general mediums characterized by the conductivity permittivity and different permeabilities we can take so there upon we have seen the direction of the traveling wave into the first medium to make 90 degree angle with the boundary surface hence we call that to be the normal incidence on to this particular topic we have solved certain problems we selected further the second medium to be perfect conductor we know that inside the perfect conductor wave propagation cannot occur as per the last chapter hence there will be the total kind of reflection into the medium number 1 we have seen the standing wave ratio in the last video we have seen the reflection of uniform plane wave from multiple interfaces also so up till now whatever the incidence type we have taken that is normal incidence the direction of incident ray is perpendicular to the boundary surface if the uniform plane wave is having any arbitrary direction so what would be the electromagnetic plane wave reflection from the boundary surface so let us start with this topic so here we have the topic title plane wave propagation in general directions so here the question is to first of all mathematically model mathematically describe the uniform plane wave to propagate any to propagate inside any direction so this problem generally we call as not the normal incidence but oblique incidence so it is o b l i q u e incidence it is so the case normal incidence that is making 90 degree or perpendicular to the boundary surface can be talked to be the incidence it is to be the special case of oblique incidence so addressing such problems requires to formulate first of all such a coordinate system which will be working into the all three dimensions initially in general we have taken the direction of propagation to be let us say z direction and e and h components from the electromagnetic wave were also perpendicular to the direction of propagation either selecting electric with the y component and the magnetic with x component so they are mutually perpendicular as well as perpendicular to the direction of propagation the wave model we have termed to be the tem wave model transverse electromagnetic wave model so in this case now we don't select only the z direction to be direction of propagation the direction may have the x component y component and z component and of course the electric and magnetic components will also have those particular x y z components keeping 90 degree or in general orthogonality with direction of propagation as well as with each other so for that purpose we shall proceed further so the phase shift constant to have wave propagation into the medium we generally denote by beta we can also denote it by k so it is for general medium omega under root mu epsilon so here omega is the angular frequency for wave propagation mu is permeability of the medium into henry parameter and epsilon gives us the permittivity of the medium into farads per meter now if vector nature of this particular k or the phase shift constant beta if you consider so that time the direction of propagation what we describe by using the pointings vector will be the direction of this particular k so instead of directly going to three dimensions first of all we select two dimensions so here we select along with the z direction x component is also present for the propagation of wave so graphically representing the k vector 
will be of this particular form. So let us say this is the x axis. I don't follow the right handed coordinate system here because we want to work into two dimension only right now. So let us say this is the z axis. This is the x axis intersecting into the origin. So the k vector that is having the components into the x as well as z direction will be arbitrarily shown like this. So any general direction we can say. So this is k bar at this particular point. So the resolved components into the x and z direction can be shown like this. So these components are also perpendicular to each other. So right from the origin along the x axis, the projection is intersecting here. So here we can say this is kx bar and this much of projection that is intersecting here will give us k z bar. So k bar we have selected that is equal to beta omega under root mu epsilon. So this is the direction of propagation of wave. So we shall select the parallel direction represented by v sub x p. So v sub x p is direction of propagation velocity. So v represents the velocity here. The wavelength can also be represented. So for that purpose, we have to draw the wave fronts. So into this particular medium, as we have the space characterized by x and z locations, we have to show the wave fronts also. So that we will show later on. So as we had the earlier only, only one direction, now we have the two components. Initially, the description of phase, how the phase change occur if we select only one direction, if that direction is z direction, we used to mathematically represent it by e to the power plus or minus used to be selected with respect to the direction to the power j times k into z. Now, if at any point into this particular space, let us select the point at this particular place. So as we have x axis and z axis, this point location can be given by x comma z x comma z so joining this particular point to the origin we can say this is the positional vector this is the positional vector let us say this is r bar r bar gives the position of this uh, field point we can say with respect to the origin now we shall take the help of this positional vector when we switch from one direction uh, one dimensional case to the two dimensional case so initially we had representation by this form selecting z direction only we have z as well as x component therefore the phasor form of electric field intensity or electric wave you can say will be given by e0 into e to the power minus j into here we have k dot with r. So k bar and r bar are having dot products here. So in general for the two dimensions that we have selected k bar should be originally it will be having the kx ax cap plus kz az cap and r bar will be so r as given in terms of r uh, x and z so it will be r bar given by x ax cap plus it will be z az cap. So here if you take k bar dot of r bar we will be left with kx ax cap plus kz az cap this bracket will have dot multiplication with this particular x ax cap plus z az cap. Hence, the resultant of this particular dot product will be kx into x plus kz into z. Hence, the plane view propagation to take the propagation for two dimensional direction, we can say the phasor of electric wave ES will be given by capital E sub x 0 that is the magnitude e to the power minus j. Here we put that particular dot product that is kx into x plus kz into 
said here. So this I outline. This is for the two-dimensional case. So if this two-dimensional case is there, we get back to the diagram. So we have the kx and kz two components here. So the angle that will be helpful to show us the direction of propagation we take with respect to the kx bar. So the angle we denote by theta. Mathematically denoting the theta we can call the angle of propagation. Angle of propagation and we can mention theta is nothing but tan inverse of kz component divided by kx component. This simple relation in trigonometric form we can obtain from the geometry of this particular diagram. So this is angle of propagation. Further, we shall talk about the wavelength that is very much important. So wavelength can be given by lambda is equal to 2 pi radians of phase change has to occur in k. Therefore, here 2 pi will be divided by the magnitude of k. We can substitute kx square plus kz square and this summation should be under the square root. Hence, this will be the formula for wavelength in this particular two-dimensional direction of propagation case. Further, the velocity of propagation v sub xp can be denoted by taking the ratio of omega angular frequency divided by k. So, this shall also become omega divided by the denominator will be the same here. So, kx square plus kz square to the power 1 by 2 we mentioned to denote the square root. So this is velocity of propagation. Now in the diagram we have shown you the velocity of propagation not the wavelength. We know that wavelength is the distance covered into the space when the wave changes one cycle or a phase shift of 2 pi radians is there. So in this particular diagram there should be the phase wave fronts that are having the equal phase at any point into that particular wave fronts. Therefore, the wave fronts should be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So direction of propagation is actually this particular k bar. So starting from this particular origin. So let us say this is one wave front. This is another wave front next to that. So these wave fronts will be having the equal distances. So you can consider the symmetry into this particular diagram. Hence the spatial distance, the distance as a measurement of this particular space. So between the two wave fronts, the distance covered we can denote that is lambda denoting the wavelength here. And these are the red line that are the wave fronts here. Now if you see here the distance lambda and the intersections onto the x axis or onto the z axis, this length onto the x axis or z axis, the projections are having the higher length, higher magnitude as compared to this wavelength. So wave fronts we have shown into this diagram. So we have selected the only two components to represent the direction of propagation. Hence, if we add one more component for a representation of k bar, and that of the r bar. So in general it will be kx ax cap plus ky ay cap plus kz az cap along with r bar will be equal to it will be x ax cap plus y ay cap and z az cap taking the dot product of k bar with that of the r bar and uh, substituting it in the formula for the ES bar that is the phasor of electric wave or electric field wave you can say. So this shall become from a two dimensional direction problem to that of the three dimensional direction of propagation of wave problem. So in any case if you take arbitrary direction that is having XYZ components we shall say that the incidence onto the boundary it will be the oblique incidence. The propagation will have the frequency that may be given by Vp divided by lambda we can say or we can have alternate forms. If you take the x component only, 
so it will be vpx divided by lambda x and for angular frequency omega upon 2 pi will be the simple relation that is already known to us so into the next video by taking the foundation from this particular video that we have discussed plane wave propagation in general direction we can specify it to the point plane wave reflection at oblique incidence angles so i hope you will be very much practice and familiar for the electromagnetic plane wave reflection either it is of normal incidence or oblique incidence so for getting such more information and details of this subject electromagnetic field theory you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you